hello. Today is what is today? Today's Sunday, and with me it today is Darshan Shanti, who is the feel good good poet, and this is Kristen Clark unmasked and i'm gonna i'm calling you out on that tie right now so before we started this darshan had to show me his tie that lindsey cooper has oh my gosh love yourself first that is exactly exactly what this is all about and how fortuitous that lindsey cooper who's been here on this podcast um is 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 that you wore that tie because that is what my whole morning has been about my whole morning has been about because yesterday oh gosh i'm just like blah, 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 and i want darshan to introduce himself but yesterday i watched darshan's video where he was talking about walking on coals and doing the rebar in the soft little recess of your neck with another person and bending it and the biggest thing was you can do anything, anything. And that was like, I was like, okay, Darshan, you're up. <laughs> We're doing this. I'm not waiting. I'm doing this on a Sunday because, oh my gosh, impulse, impulse, impulse. So go, go, go. Introduce yourself. Tell me anything. Tell everybody anything you want about the amazing being that is you. Well, thank you. It is, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Anytime that I can be interviewed and share a part of my heart, that's my mission is to uplift and inspire people, to help them be happy, to feel good and have fun and to help them live lives they love and love the lives they live while loving themselves unconditionally. And however I do that through my poetry or through the live videos which that I do, which are based on my poetry or for 25, more than 25 years that it's coaching people, Anything I can do to uplift and inspire, like I said, that's what makes my heart sing. Mm -hmm. To help people love themselves so deeply. Because when they do that, it's life for them is magical. It changes so completely. They're not worried about what other people think of them. They're not worried about other people's opinions, period. They go for their dreams because they believe in themselves. And that's who I am. So I've been writing poems for 30 years and helping people wow. in that personal development realm for about that time as well. Oh, 30 years. Yeah, wow. I, may, I, I look good for my age. I'm, I'll be 52 next year in April. Oh, you just little young buck, you. Just a pup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started in my early 20s. I had a really rough childhood. I was the uh, kid in school that everyone knew and no one liked. I was the class clown. I was picked on by everybody. I was uh, the misfit who didn't even fit in with the misfits. <laughs> at, at, at school lunch, they would let me sit at their table, but I had to sit away from them. <laughs> Think about that when the misfits won't even let you. <laughs> so, and that was my whole life. I mean, in every grade, oh. I was in trouble. Yeah, but how awesome, because that created this. Yes. And... Oh, so, wow, if you hadn't been through that, you wouldn't be the amazing person you are today. Without a doubt. It didn't, you know, and that is a really wonderful point, Kristen. Thank you for making that. Not about me, but about anybody that's listening. No matter what you've gone through, it doesn't matter because it's in the past. Like I say in one of my poems, your past has passed. It's over. It's through. Your life begins now. It's waiting for you. So oh, go I for your dreams, that. no matter how big they are, and never give up or settle for par. Just take the leap. There's nothing to fear. When you jump, your path will appear. For an amazing life, that is essential. Soon you'll be living your fullest potential. You almost made me cry. Oh my gosh, I just fell more in love with you than I ever could before. So, and by Thank the you. way, just a little side note, Darshan had noticed that I'm not looking <laughs> at the camera. Um, so you guys that think I'm looking off camera, I'm not. <laughs> so, and then I just, you know, what, and just listen and don't worry about that. Um, I just, that just had to come up for me, but wow, you know, I, have you ever heard of, 
oh, what's her name? I'm going to have to send it to you. It is this amazing Gina, another Gina, um, Gina, what is she? But she's, um, she does that. She gets up on stage and she does what you just did. And it's, it's all about the empower. She calls herself too much woman. Gina Hatzitz, I think it is. And she calls herself too much woman and she's very voluptuous and she's very Greek. And I love, she's a little more, um, uh, you know, feminism against masculism type more than I like, but she, she's a kick to listen to when she really gets on a fun little rampage, like what you just did, you know, and whether it's a rampage that was written before and you've memorized it or whatever, it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And it's, it's an invitation for all of us to step up our game, step it up. Let's be more than we're being in this moment right now. And I, oh, yesterday's video was 100% about that. And I loved it, I loved it, I loved it because it was 100% about, you can't, you know, saying this, you can do anything is one thing, but feeling it, feeling that walking on coals. And I love that you said you saved so the calls and I love that you said you saved the rebar because in those moments there's just like the whole universe opens up in front of you like what can I do what can I be anything so many people teach that yo you can do anything you want but what happens when people hear it here then it comes out here somehow it gets jumbled up and they go, well, you, maybe you could be whatever you want, but not me, because you don't know me. You don't know what happened to me. You don't know my past, blah, blah, blah. And so then they turn it all around in their heads, and that's what screws them up. And, and they, in other words, they pay attention to the garbage instead of paying attention to the love. That's why I'm always talking about loving yourself unconditionally, believing in yourself unconditionally, and forgetting all of that stuff which is what we were talking about before, to go from me being a kid who was picked on, abused, I had no friends. I mean, I'm, everybody would, I mean, second grade, I'll give you a, for instance, I was in the principal's office 14 days in a row. In second, think about that, second grade, they just didn't know what to do with me. Third grade, I was in trouble. My teacher used to ignore me all the time, so it was kind of rough for me because I always wanted that attention. Now, fourth grade, fourth grade, I was an outstanding student. And people say, well, that's pretty good. I'm like, no, I was outstanding in the hall the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> my, my teacher used to throw me out. He couldn't deal with me in the class. And just every grade, it was problem after problem. I mean, girls would pick on me. I'd Walk down the hall, I had so many books, they'd knock them out of my hand, I'd pick them up, they'd knock them out again, or I'd go to my locker and they'd dump my locker out. But it was just, it was that kind of life. I used to have to run home in different ways so I wouldn't get picked on. I'm only telling you that because not only did it go through all the years of elementary, middle, and then high school. In fact, I went to five high schools in four years in three cities in two states. And there was only one me in common and I had problems everywhere I went. And then I joined the military and I was a medic. I was in the army trained to save people's lives. Now get this, I was such a pain. My own unit voted me most likely to be killed by them <laughs> because they figured they were safer off with me dead than alive. Now I see so, why you and Franny get along so well. <laughs> Fabulous Franny Sheridan, absolutely amazing. That that woman is a ball of love, a ball of joy, a ball of fire, a ball of fun, a ball of femme fatale. She is amazing. She I watch her videos every day. In fact, we have a surprise, I'll tell you later, that there's something we're we're now working on. It's all so good when you learn to love yourself, and that's the transition. That's where this whole story went. I went from absolutely hating myself and just being so disgusted with everything, the hating life. And, and I went to absolutely love, to feeling good about myself, to loving everybody. And when you go from hate to love, everything changes. When you go from feeling terrible to feeling good, everything changes. And that's why my poetry, I've written over 2000 poems now. 
And I call myself the feel good poet because that's what I do. I feel good. And then I share that good feeling. Yes. Yes. And do you find that you're making a conscious choice at times, like times there's something, some thought or something occurs that that's, you know, old, the old you would have responded in a, we can call it negative way. And you are consciously going, no, I, I choose not to respond that way anymore. Yeah. You know what I tell my uh, lower self, my lower thoughts, if you would have, thanks, man. I got this one. Appreciate the <laughs> feedback. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but your, your input's not needed here. <laughs> yes. I appreciate it. You took care of me when you had to, but I got this from here. And, and that's the point. You don't have to listen to our thoughts. Only listen to the ones that uplift and inspire, make you feel good, pick you up, and make you just come alive and make you want to thrive. Not the ones Ooh. that put you down. Yes. Ooh, that was beautiful. And, you know, that, that's exactly what my whole morning has been about. It's been about going, yes, I hear about contrast, but... I, you know, again, that's that old me. And it's like, yeah, okay, contrast was great. That's great. But I'm choosing what my inner being is doing. I'm choosing what my source self is doing, which is love, which is encouragement, which, which is confidence, which is self-empowerment, which is so much appreciation, which is just following those impulses and trusting them, trusting them. And just going, I don't know what's going to happen by trusting this, but I can't wait to see. I want to see if I can do something. You just reminded me. I don't know if I can. I've never tried it on a list. I have. Look at this. Watch this. <laughs> oh, look what you did. Love yourself first. There she is. There's that tie. There's everything. You know, and I, that is such a powerful subject. It's such a powerful subject because people can turn that into narcissism and vanity and all these things, but it's so much bigger than that. It's so much bigger than those tiny little labels. You know, when we step in to, you know, if you look up narcissism in the dictionary, you're going to see an exorbitant amount of self-love. And I'm like, that's a bad thing. <laughs> that's that's bad. That is wonderful. That is good because when you love yourself that much, you can't help but that slop over onto everybody else. And it's, it's, but it's so much better than that. You can just be your best self. You're choosing in every moment to be the absolute best version of you, which is a pure reflection of your sore self. You're the pure reflection. I, I love her colors. You, her you colors are noticed, amazing. Yeah, have you ever noticed that it, it I, I told her this, I said, your pictures always look like there's a light behind them. There's like some big uh, thousand watt bulb. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> Where did Sean go? This, this thousand watt bulb behind her colors, making her colors even brighter. And I love They that. are, they, they come, all her paintings come a lot. They sort of have a life of their own. She infuses so much joy into them she truly does create with joy it's it's fascinating watching it the reason i moved again here i'll move again so i wanted everybody to see the winking heart yes that's the whole idea it's that that wink that cute adorable figure it's it's sort of like it's our message to everybody it's just love and there's nothing serious going on here. Serious and we're just going to wink and enjoy the day and enjoy your life and enjoy what comes to you. By yes. the way, you, you said something about narcissism, about so much having an inflated like love for yourself. That is the worst definition I have ever heard to me. And this is not about narcissism, but when you love yourself on that level, you're clean, you're pure. We're not talking about ego. That's the difference. We're not talking about being insecure. So you have to have that overinflated sense of self. That's not good. That's selfish. That's like a two-year-old to me, me, me. It's all about me. You can't have any of my cookies. But when you have that sense of self-love, that, that, tremendous belief 
in yourself and you just feel so good about who you are, that's healthy, having a healthy self-respect and self-regard. That's a big, big, big difference. Narcissistic people, completely the opposite of that. So yeah, love, love. I love myself unconditionally. I love you unconditionally. I can't help it now. Before, it was the furthest thing from my world, and now it's the only thing in my world. I love that. I love that. And that's that standing in the middle of the war zone and it doesn't affect you. You're still head over heels. No, you know, and the thing is, is I, I remember is when we love ourselves that unconditionally, the, the what ifs can't come in, you know, the war zone can't come in. You're not going to, you're not going to attract that anyway. But it's fun to say it. It's fun to say, yeah, well, if I'm in the war zone and, and nobody, will stand by what I believe. At least I will. And that's everything. And it's, 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 it's such an, a place of empowerment. It's, and I'm going to keep saying that word because that just keeps saying, seems to keep coming out today with you. But it is such a space of, uh, you know who Sanjala Mansingh is? No. Okay. She was the very, very first podcast. And she's right now doing this great five-day thing where and today's uh, live video was asking people to say who's been their, their biggest influences or who do they just appreciate from this year of 2020. And, you know, what people have come into their lives that have just really helped to make it even even better year. And I love that she's asking that, but I had to step up and say, you know, there's these people, there's so many people that this year brought to me, but number one is me because the person that I have evolved into, but the person that, that manifested all those amazing people that manifested all this, this empowering thoughts and moods and, and invitations to myself to step it up has been me. And when everything comes and goes, everything in our life comes and goes, when every single person comes and goes and every pandemic comes and goes and every epiphany comes and goes, there's one thing that never does. And you're looking at her, you know, it's me. There's this, and to, to, to just really step in more than anything to what's going on in here, what's going on in here. Let's pay attention. Let's, let's eagle watch what's going on in here because I'm expecting excellence out of you girl, because you are capable of doing that. You are. And I, I, oh, I don't even know where I was going with that, but it was awesome. <laughs> As long as it felt good, which it did, that that's what matters. It's like when you leave people, they may not remember the things you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And that makes people feel truly, truly wonderful. Look, excellent people settle for less all the time because they don't believe they're good enough. And they, so they stop at this level instead of, you know, going up, 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 up. You know what I mean? They don't have to do that. They can start right now today saying, you know what? That was the old way. This is the new me. And this is what I want to do. And they can start declaring it. Look, I bring this up in my live videos and I'm going to bring it up because it just happened before I got on. Muhammad Ali always called himself the greatest, the greatest, the greatest. And then guess what everybody else started doing? Calling him the greatest. In other words, he called it into being. He believed it. He felt it. He knew it. There was no different than in him than you. He just had a stronger belief. Why am I saying that? I just got a message from a lady on Facebook from one of my poetry posts. She said, wow, you really are the feel-good poet. So and, and she's like, many people now are saying that. So... People are now coming along with what I've been saying because it's who I've been being and who I be dictates what I do, which dictates what I have. And then the world sees it, even if they don't see it right away. Now, let me be clear. This didn't happen right away. First of all, I've been writing poems for a long time. I started calling myself the feel good poet about four years ago or so. And it's just now starting to catch on. That's what I am getting at here. 
It takes a while for other people because you have to keep being it. You have to be so constant and steady in your vibration that there's no wobble whatsoever. This is who you are. People see it, people feel it, people react to it, and people treat you that way. Let me write this down. <laughs> you know, there you go. I always tell people, I'm like, if I look away, it's because I'm writing down what you said, because when I promote this, there's, there's, there's those nuggets and you've been throwing them out left and right. But uh, yeah, I like that. You know, you can, and it, it, oh, that was so good. That was just so good. It, it, it's that constant practice. It's, it's like a heroin addict that's got to watch themselves 24 seven. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's not like, oh, I can just do my med my meditation in the morning and I can do my segment intentions and now I'm good for the rest of the day. It's not, not if the rest, you know, if you're used to latching onto drama and responding to it, not if your, your internal thoughts are dramatic and, and, and you're so used to fear that that's what you run to in every moment without even realizing it. No, if you want to be, it's, it's like Abraham always says, fake it until you make it, you know, and it, it, it's like, okay, you're not really faking it at all, but you are the one saying, I expect excellence out of me. So in every moment, I got to be that excellence I expect out of my reality. I've got to be it first. Then my reality catches up to me. And it, yes, that is so, you know, we all want that instant gratification, but oh my gosh, to experience and look back on yourself holding true to something that has no evidence that's going to work other than your faith. And then it, you, you get the, you finally get the evidence and to go, wow, I was amazing. I'm so glad I hung in there. I'm so glad I believed in me when nobody else did when nobody else out there supported me. I did, and look what I did. Oh my gosh. That's, I love that you brought it, Muhammad Ali. Um, I love these podcasts. They have so many little synchronicities, so many of them. And of course, yesterday I had a meme came up that had Muhammad Ali on it. <laughs> and I just, it's so funny. Every single one of these podcasts that this has happened through the whole thing. They'll mention something or say something that I was like, that happened yesterday. <laughs> you know, I, I have it somewhere. I thought it was right here and apparently it's not. Um, I do have one hanging up over there, but I don't want to go. It's, he says, what you are thinking about, you are becoming which is absolutely true. But the other one that I thought was handy and apparently I don't have it. He, he said like something like my only fault was that I didn't believe in how great I really am. Yes. Now coming from Muhammad Ali, wow. if he's saying that, that I didn't believe in how great I really am. I mean, even just thinking about that, I have goosebumps and chills all throughout my body. I'm like, if a man of that stature says that, and what am I thinking? Yes. It's crazy. Um, the fake it till you make it come. And I also want to say something. I like to say, believe it until you receive it. Yeah. Oh, I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There's another nugget for you. Believe it until you receive it. Believe it because... You don't receive it if you don't believe it, because people never go for things they don't believe they can achieve. And if they don't believe it, then the universe isn't going to give them anything or God or whatever, they, whatever language you want to use for that. You're not going to get anything. You're going to get what you truly believe. And so it doesn't matter what you're saying, but it does matter what you're feeling in here. And if you're feeling fear, you'll get more fear, more doubt, more uncertainty. That's that's the point. There's a, there's a few acronyms for fear that have been going around for years. I created a couple of them. One is uh, feelings escalated, anticipating reality. Ooh. You're anticipating. That's what fear is. Fear is a future thing. Regret is a past thing. So if you're fearful, you're living into a. An, you're using your imagination for negative purposes. 
for things that are not going to happen. Most things people are afraid of never even manifest. And if you're regretting, then you're thinking about stuff from the past and you're missing the present moment. Yeah. That's not good. I like uh, also forget everything and run. <laughs> <laughs> I like that best. <laughs> <laughs> or a foolish ego altering reality. <laughs> and when you, you think know, about that, go ahead. Fear is, fear is not love is the whole point. And when you step into love, the fear disappears. Yes, I love that. Ooh, that's there's your there's a little poem in there. Um, I love that Bob Proctor. You know, he says both fear and faith demand that you believe in something you can't see. So choose, you know, and 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 to make that choice again. Here it comes. It's like making that choice on an in breath out breath moment. You you know, yeah, great. It was great for the two hours you spent this morning doing all that. But what about now? What about later? tonight what about to what about every moment your old knee-jerk thoughts come in can you catch them you know let's let's catch them every time you're craving that that old familiar drama that old familiar uh victimization thoughts whatever stepping in and saying fuck no <laughs> i'm going there because i no. just know by itself yes. ain't good enough we gotta add it we got, you know, and I was telling uh, Jeannie yesterday, I love hell yeses and I love hell no's and that there's nothing in between. It's either a hell yes or it's a hell no. And when you really step into that level of bigness, that level of decisiveness, of, of concreteness, Holy cow, the way your world opens up, but it's it's got to be in here first because, you know, you can say a hell yes and then going maybe uh here comes those rationalizations you know here comes those old yummy excuses we've been playing with forever and it's like no you chewed the flavor out of that gum a long time ago spit it out let's let's step up to something new and far far more juicy and far far more delicious that is a really good example you chewed the flavor out of that gum a long time ago now you're just caught in that perpetual loop of chewing, of going through the motions. And so many people do that. You just gave me an idea when you said what Bob Proctor said, it never came to me before. And, and just repeat it, because then, then when you're done saying it, I'm going to say the idea about faith and fear. I mean, he says both, both, both faith and fear demand that you believe in something you can't see. Good. Right. That's exactly it. Here's what I want to say. We often attribute that to the bigger things. Like I say, I am not, I want to be not, I will be. I am the poet laureate of the United States yes. period. End of story. So now that takes faith and I have to believe it until I see it. I say, I am, it is, there is no doubt period. End of story. Now, Fear. So many things people fear about. And this is with the juicy thing that came. We can't see that either. We just make it up. But we make up and we believe that the negative is going to happen. And we put all of this energy into thinking and feeling it's going to happen, even though it's invisible. It's got nothing to do with the reality. And so we have faith in a fearful way, instead of having faith in a loving and a strong believing in a positive way. Isn't that interesting? I love when people get going like you just <laughs> did. I love that. That is the whole purpose of this. I don't know. I haven't put Gina's out yet, um, but same thing. I love that because there it is. There's that aspect of you that there's no wobble. There's no gray. There's no in between. There's like, this is the way it is. And oh, that was beautiful. Nice rampage there, mister. <laughs> well, thank you. It was very powerful and very inspired in the moment by what Bob Proctor said that you then rephrased. It was perfect. I it's, a, it's also when you think about it, it's very life changing. If you can have that strong a belief and that strong a faith in the imaginary crap, then why can't you have that strong a faith, that strong a belief in the imaginary greatness? Yes, 
Yes. Oh, imaginary greatness. Here's the title of a new poem for you. Imaginary great. Now I have so many poems about being great. Um, one of the things Lindsay, because Lindsay always um, has taken, not always, we met, by the way, you talked about who are the people you met this year that have been amazing or she did on her podcast. Well, Lindsay and I only met this year. Um, did you, we, now you guys met on here. Have you met face to face? No, we have never met because she lives in Washington mm -hmm. state and I live in New Mexico, about 1400 miles away. But so we, and we met through Gina Mallison. Uh, she, I wrote a poem and she, Gina says, I have to share that with this artist friend of mine. This is how she thinks and feels. So we connected and we hit it off so well. It's amazing. Like we think the same things, we feel the same things. We, it, it's just incredible. So she takes my poetry and then fashions it into beautiful paintings. And my core message was love yourself first. And that's what she came up with. Yes. Yeah. I, and so, I think she, she was one of the first people that mentioned you to me. And then of course, Franny did too. And it all these amazing, because I put out the intention and, and in fact, intention isn't strong enough anymore. It's, I put out the, 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 what is a queen, the decree. I put out the decree to the universe that I am now going to only be interacting with visionaries, with powerfully tuned in aligned visionaries. I don't just want tuned in people. I want the visionaries. And you guys are dropping in my lap like rain. I can't keep up with it. I, you should see the list of people I have. And every single one of you, I'm like, hey, want to be on my podcast? And you all are going, yeah. And I love that. I love that they can feel, you know, and even the word co-creation. I'm like, yeah, it's been, that's that gum. That's been, it's all been, and the word universe, that's like all gum now that's been chewed. The flavor's chewed out. I was like, I want new stuff. And these, and how you guys inspire one another, you know, and you, of course, you and Lindsay, you know, are, are like volleying perfectly together and, and just expanding. And we could say it's because you're both creative, but no, it's so much bigger than that. You're so, you both are so loving this this part of yourself that that we access through art and through creation i mean you're literally not just creating inside you're creating outside and you know i i used to always i was a personal trainer still am for many years and i notice a lot of personal trainers become like spiritually big people like matt con and i don't know if you've ever heard of daniel scranton all these people that are just they're, they just, and, and, and it's funny. And I'm like going, well, it's, it, it has to do with bringing that inside out and, or vice versa. And really, I don't know, there's something big in there, but that's exactly what you and Lindsay do. So of course, it, that's, it's like, it's a, that's a no brainer that the two of you coming together would just explode into this beauty that is behind you and everything. It, it is. And I, whenever I wear this tie in public, I get so many compliments because it's such a beautiful message. It's not just about the picture. It, it puts out an energy and that's what she is able to do. She, it's, it's unbelievable. We are doing a children's book together now. I actually oh. wrote it. She's doing the pictures for it. There's just so many beautiful things on the horizon with everything we are doing together. Yes. There's a, a little, I wrote these lyrics because I, I like writing lyrics and poems. I, I'm not a musician. I'm always looking for the right musicians that can feel my words and then turn them into songs. And slowly but surely they're starting to show up and it's really neat. And I sent her this that I was trying to write into a song forever and I couldn't. And I woke up uh, about a week ago in the morning. I'm like, this is for Lindsay. Just send it to her. And the words are, and it's of course for this podcast, because I want everybody to hear this, it just ties into Lindsay. Be the star that you are and shine so bright that you light up the day and not just the night. Yes, be the star that you are and shine so bright and never let anyone 
dim your light. Oh. <laughs> so, Gina Hatsis, the one I brought up earlier, yeah. one of the things she says is, oh my God, of course it just, just went out of my head. It'll come back in, but it's exactly what you just said. It, uh, it's, uh, we, oh, we shine our light so bright because, you, because baby, you just can't dim the sun. And I, that's always the end, like when she gets up on the stage and she does her, her spoken words, that's always the ending. And I'm just like, hell yes, woman. Hell yes. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you invited me onto your podcast, like it was a instant messenger out of the blue. And it was such great energy. Like, all right, you're next. I'm like, Tag, you're it. Yeah. <laughs> I had... <laughs> I knew I was going to come. I had no idea when, and I'm just so happy and grateful. And you're like, when are you? I'm like, when are you free? How about tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. The sooner the better. Why put off yes. the joy any longer? Yes, yes. And when I get these people who I reach out to and they're like, well, I'm going to let you know. And stuff, and I'm like, okay. And I, I, I just know. I just, that's that step, that faith. There's the faith that faith at the right time, right? Everything. And I love when Abraham does do that, when they're like, when they say, oh, you know, don't worry, chill out, always perfect place, perfect time, always, always, always. Everything is divinely orchestrated and, and it's divinely orchestrated from in here and it comes out and it to step into that level of faith in yourself. It, you can't get bigger than the word love yourself first because it is that stepping 100% into the faith, not fear of ourselves, not fear of these, these thoughts I had and, and fearing them, but going, oh, there's something amazing that just came. And, and it doesn't have to be the things that are stimulated from love. It can be stimulated from anger and going, oh, wow, you know, and finding the love within that anger, finding the love within there finding the love that's so well disguised that it's been fooling us all along. And then it's like, bingo, there you are. There's that strong, amazing, empowered, big, big version of me that isn't scared of anything. I agree, that's so beautifully well said. Another joyous realization came as you were speaking. And it's about the word faith. So as I think about the word faith, I wonder, now this is for me. Anybody can take it on, obviously, if he or she wants to. But I wonder how important faith is. And here's why I say that. When you have an absolutely strong belief, which you could actually replace with the word faith if you want, a strong conviction, a belief, a certainty in who you are, in your skills, talents, abilities, in your future, you don't, it's not, you don't need faith. Yes. It's, it's not because it's like something extra. It just is. It just period. Is. End of yes. story. There's no, in that sense, faith necessary. So when people say have faith, well, that's great. That's another way of saying have belief. Like I said, believe it till you receive it. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, Napoleon Hill said that way, way back, you know, a hundred years ago, uh, I, you know, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe it can achieve agreed completely. And there might've even been W. Clement Stone instead of Napoleon Hill. I've seen them both ways, but you get the point, believe it, believe in yourself and you'll receive it. And the best way to believe in yourself, you can't just, I believe in myself. I believe in my, no, 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 no. It has to be an absolute conviction. And to me, the basis of belief in yourself is love. Loving yourself first. You can ask yourself every time to, you start to think, no, I don't, but because I'm too, too heavy, I'm too short, I, my nose is too big, my, my voice is too hoarse, right? I, I can't, you know, who wants to listen to me? You wanna hear the funny part about that? This is another beautiful thing. I stopped myself from being a speaker for years because I thought nobody wanted to hear my voice. Yes. 
because it was so raspy that they wouldn't like it because I was picked on as a kid so much by my voice. They used to call me Froggy, you know, like from the Little Rascals, Froggy. Yeah. And so I was picked on all the time. So I stopped myself. So I let my past dictate my future. And that really screwed everything up. When I started to say, wait a minute, my voice is cool. It makes me unique. It sets me apart. People started going, I love your voice. <laughs> I, you know how many times I've heard that? I love your voice. And that, that again, that's the change. When I changed me, my reality also changed. And it's the same for you, not you, Kristen, of course you, but the general you out there who's ever listening. And it is, it's, it's beautifully unique to you. So if I just turned on a podcast and I couldn't see this, I'd be like, oh, that's Darshan I hear. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's nobody out there that sounds like you. It wouldn't be like, I think that's Darshan. No, it's not that faith. It's that concrete knowing. I have this thing called the sunrise mindset. And it is, it speaks to this. It speaks to that. I don't have faith the sun's going to come up this morning. I know it. In fact, I know it so deeply. I don't even have to think about it. I don't even talk about it because it's just is. It just is. It's such a solid. Same thing with our heart beating and all those things. It's, it's gravity. I don't question it. I don't need to talk about it. I don't even need to think about it. I don't need to manifest it. It just is. Right? Well, we'll manifest it. <laughs> That's Franny. There's Franny. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Sanjula Monsing, who was the uh, she, you're you're gonna love her. She's so beautiful. She's only 26 years old, and I'm like, it, it's just so wrong that you know so much at that age. It's just not right. But no, she's she talks about how it's natural and normal for us to be for our well-being to flow, for our our wealth to be beyond understanding for our, it, it's our, it's a natural and normal. So we don't need to manifest. We don't need to manifest these things. It's already natural and normal for us. And that our entire uh, podcast was about this and God, she's brilliant. And I love it. And I love her willingness to point this out and go, you know, you're, it's, you're not, it's not that it doesn't exist. It's here. It's natural. It's normal. We just have to, you know, take off those poopy colored glasses and put on the rose colored glasses that give us the 2010 vision, not just 2020. I want 2010 where everything is crystal clear. And yes, yes. You know, I love what you were saying. Faith is just, again, that's, that's too small. That's plain small. And it was one of the things I said the other day, I said, yesterday's grand epiphanies is today's playing it small. And See how so, perfect that is? I don't want you to, first of all, that is profound. You talk about nuggets, especially when you use the word grand. Yesterday's grand <laughs> epiphanies, today is playing it small. What if we all really, really live that way? That's a Muhammad Ali quote. You know, my only fault is I didn't believe in how great I really am. What if our greatest, grandest vision today needed a revision oh. to be right to be much bigger than it was before? Because who you are is that way for sure. I can't help but rhyming; it just comes out. I love it. I love that you do. And um, there's a part of me going. Did he write this before? Is he just doing this right now? He's just doing you know, this right just now. all coming out on the spot. The one poem I recited earlier about your past has passed. That, that, that has been written. That was written several years back. And people love it so much because it's very poignant. So I share that a lot. But whenever I just off the cuff, it's just there to share. <laughs> 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 like everything you're saying is just so profound. Look, we've, we've talked about Franny, everything she's doing because she's so different. Her, her messages every day, her Facebook lives, her just unwillingness to be anybody else but herself, her colors all around, her dancing, her grabbing her tuchus, you know, her, her tuchus, her tuchus, her tuchus, you know, all of it. Be yourself. 
and Lindsay with her absolute joy and love and passion and paintings and doing whatever makes her happy. You so far with the, because I'm learning about you now, all this joy and obviously personal training. I didn't even know that your, your podcast and the difference you're making and me with my heart, my soul, you know, how many people for so I want you to hear this. You talked about, I still don't get her name. The 26 year old, what is her name? The one you're talking about? Sanjula Monsing. Sanjula. She's the one that calls herself too much woman. Is that the same one? No, that's Gina Gina Hatzis. (laughs) Okay, Gina. You know how many times people called me too much, but in a negative way? You're too much. You're too loud. You're too boisterous. You're too this. You're too that. You, You know what I tell them now when they tell me I'm too much? Like, I, I thought it was 2,000 much, 2 million much, 2 billion much. What are you only talking about? Too much. I just turn it around. I am myself, and I am never, ever apologizing for being who I am, for being loud, for being fun, for being boisterous, for being joyful, to being energetic, for being passionate, for being a writer. People, look, one guy asked me, who is my favorite poet? And I told him it was Dr. Seuss. <laughs> You should have seen the look of disgust on his face when I said that. And it's amazing how people will judge you. Like in the meantime, what has he done with his life? None of that even matters. I love Dr. Seuss for his childlike innocence, for his ability to take beautiful concepts that are sometimes very complex and simplify them. And that's one of the things I pride myself on. I'm sort of a combination of Tony Robbins, Dr. Phil, Joel Osteen, and Dr. Seuss with all my poetry. For <laughs> That's how I write. I'm never you, you, who's ever watching this. I hope I'm looking right at the camera. Do not ever apologize for who you are. Be the best you, you can be. Accept it and live it so joyfully. Do not ever settle. Do not give in. Do not give up. Do not do anything less than who you really are because you owe it to yourself. You are phenomenal, fantastic, amazing, incredible, fabulous, spectacular, stupendous, tremendous, terrific, and I could go on and on and on. That is who you are. That is how you should live. That was the point. That's the point of everything. Do that. Love yourself. Believe in yourself and watch your amazing life. Thank you for letting me say that. Go, go, go. That, that guy right there. That was the guy I was like, get your ass, tag your it, get your ass on my podcast immediately. That was, you know, and that is, that is the, you know, every day. And that right there is going to be tomorrow's playing it small. What the hell's going to come out of you tomorrow? That's going to make this look like paltry shit. You know, <laughs> swat it away. You know, it all. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And this is, you know, Mark Toms, right? Uh, he's he's Karen, he, Karen Money Williams and him, have, they, they have the Abraham Fun site. I just friended Karen Money Williams, and I have been listening to a ton of Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy oh, and Robert Scheinfeld now. Yeah. I did all a lot of the Abraham stuff for years, and now I'm, again, yesterday stuff, and I'm moving into all of this quantum world that we live in. Quantum. Yes, like I'm listening to... Uh, busting loose from the money game from Robert Scheinfeld right now. It's just, and it's all quantum physics. It's not, that's to me where it all comes because that's where everything is created. It's not, it's created in the quantum world and we are all part of that. That's what the expansion is becoming. So yeah, so I just became friends with her. I'll get to know more of who she is and what she does. I love her name. I too, I until the other day, thought it was a nickname. Well, I didn't I realize it was actually her last name was Money. We all do, we all do. But her husband, Mark Toms, he, I, I don't know if he coined the term, but he brought up the term to me, expect excellence. 
And it's a term he work, he uses with his friends. And he goes, Kristen, this is you, is expect excellence. And I love that he saw something in me that I didn't see. And that has, I've been playing with it because this is where I'm like, this is where it came from, is this expect excellence. And, and, and to expect that of myself and not to settle for anything less out of myself. And that's where I start getting these epiphanies um, of it, you know, I'll coin somebody, Neville Goddard or, or any of these guys or Abraham, but I know deep inside, I manifested this. I manifested Abraham. I manifested Esther Hicks. I manifested all that. None of that exists without my attention to it. Nothing in this world exists without my attention to it. I am that sovereign. So if something anybody says, be it, you know, whatever level of godhood that we put them in, including God, including source, if somebody says, oh, source does this and it doesn't sit right with me, I'm like, well, I'm the God of this reality here. So sorry, you know, don't try and cage this God. Don't try and tell this God that this, there's law of attraction when law of attraction doesn't exist unless I give it attention. And oh, to move, this is quantum for me, to move into that, that level of bigness. It's like, oh, the infinite possibilities in there are infinite. They're endless. There's not, there's, you can't, and it, there's times where I'm like, this is so big. I got to go run back to my small, you know, I've got, where's my life raft? <laughs> and it, 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 cause it really is, is such a space of, I created all this. And that's why I love quantum. I love, have you ever heard of the headless way? I have not. You would like this because it, it, and I can't, you could just put it in and it would, it, the, uh, the author would come up, but it really is very, very quantum. And it's very quantum. It's like, if you're, if you're sitting on a spinning chair and you're spinning around, are you really spinning around? Or are you sitting still and your world is spinning around you and you've just created that. And it, and it's also about you know, when we're sitting here and, and I'm going to let, cause I, I will butcher what they're trying to explain with a headless way, but it really is about, you know, you're sitting in a chair and you're looking forward, nothing behind you exists. Cause you can't see it. You, you know, you can sit here and say, I know there's a wall behind me, but you can't prove that you can't prove that. And, and anyway, it, it's, it's so fun and it's so big. And I love, I love, I love, in fact, one of my podcasts, oh, it was with Karen, Karen Berner. We did a lot of this fun quantum stuff because that, you know, you just go and go and go when it comes to quantum. There's no ceiling. There's no, this is the laws of the universe and, and that's why your world is blah, blah, blah. It's, it's none of that. It's like, yeah. yeah, you can play there, but that's playing it small. Let's get bigger. Let's get more grand. Let's you know, you are the sovereign and what you say and what you believe and what you know is everything. It, it's completely unlimited. And that vastness is sometimes hard to grasp when it's that, like the, you, you talk about the chair and you're spinning the chair, is it you spinning or is it the world spinning around you? And on another level, there is no world and there is no you. Yes. Yes, right? exactly. It's, yeah. it's all the illusion that has to be there because if the illusion wasn't so real, like Robert Schoenfeld says, in, in Schoenfeld says in a movie, if the special effects are really, really bad, people will not go see the movie. So you're in a movie, you're watching the movie and you know it's not real, but the special effects are so good that you're, you're drilled, you're, I mean drilled, you're completely, well, yeah, you're drilled to your seat. You're stuck there. You're watching. You can't help it. If they were bad, you'd get up and walk out. And it's the same thing about this entire reality. It, this, this illusion is so real because if it wasn't, what would be the point of playing the game? And that's this whole thing that I'm looking into now going, okay, all right. If it's all an illusion, if it's all a game on that level, then what freaking game am I going to play starting today? Not tomorrow, not next week. What today? Who, who do I want to be? 
Yeah. What do I want to do? What do I want to have? But like in joy, like when I am, when I go into here and really feel my heart, feel my, my winking heart, <laughs> when I feel it, I know it's against the picture. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> uh, look at that. So yeah, when I go into that, what does that heart really say to me? What, how much does it speak to me? And what is it telling me that I should do? What, look, when you follow your bliss, you cannot miss. That's, that's the whole point. <laughs> my, my everything is just going, ah! <laughs> you speak in my language, mister. And I'm gonna present this to you. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Lynn, who is another podcast, she brought up changing your past. Not just seeing your future and, and going, I get to manifest and I get to play and, and create, but going into your past and changing that and seeing how everything and literally witnessing how everything around you starts changing because you're telling a new story. And oh my gosh. And that's what I've been playing with and more, more quantum fun. And I've been playing with that and literally watching the people around me going oh yeah I remember when you did this and this and this and go and me going I just started telling that story to myself yesterday and now they're <laughs> changing their memories because it, it it is and yes you can go even way bigger than that but it's so fun it is so fun to see that a story I was telling was holding me back and having it step up, having this story step up and going, oh, me, me, can you tell me in a new way? And, and just going, oh, yeah, let's play. Let's play. What more can I do? How, how bigger can I get? How, and it, yes, it, it does get a little nerve wracking when you start seeing the, the vast infinity in front of you. And, um, and, and, but then again, being able to step up and going, this is mine. I created this. I determine if this is too big or too small. All right, how much bigger can I get? And oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Perfect, perfect summation. Absolutely, you are the creator. Yes. It, it, that that's it. So you know, don't wait till later. Start now. Start now. Your life is worth it. It's so much joy. It's so much fun. There's no point. Look, I know there's quantum all the stuff about no time. But again, while we live in this illusion, you sometimes have to relate to your past, your present or your future. We can change our past because there is no past. Yeah. It's all happening right now. We can change our future or have whatever future I want because there is no future. But in this 3D reality, yes, there's a past. Yes, there's a present. And yes, there's a future on the other side. So I, I understand, and sometimes you got to figure out how to walk that path to say the right words. Well, I thought you said there was no past. Well, yes, there is, but there really isn't. <laughs> Contradiction's my middle name. <laughs> well, there you go. Like I said yesterday, my thing about, well, if you can be anything you want, well, I want to be a linebacker for the Cowboys. But look, if you're 50 years old, you weigh 150 pounds, you're not going to be a linebacker for the Cowboys. Well, I thought you said you could create anything you wanted. Well, you can, but you only are going to create anything you want. And you can create that on another dimension, another timeline, if you would, another reality, because there's multiple ones. But in this reality, in this 3D physical reality that you're in right now, is that really what you want? Now, maybe you want to become a hedge fund manager, not a linebacker for the Cowboys. And you will manifest that which you truly believe. That's a distinguishing thing that I want to be absolutely clear about. Yes, you can be, you have to be whoever you want because that dictates what you do. And then that ultimately dictates what you have. So if you're being afraid, you're going to do fearful things or not do fearful things because you're going to, you won't take the action that makes you afraid. And then you'll have what a fearful person has. But if you be love, you'll do what love will do and you'll have what love will have. If you have that strong, absolute, utter conviction, belief, certainty, knowing, as you said, that knowing in here, 
th that creates the reality instantaneously, like Abraham talks about. Ask and it is given, period. Yes. Drop the mic. <laughs> Boom. Boom. There you go. Well, you know, we could go on and on, but it, 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 it's 100%. Love yourself first and all this follows. This, all this brilliant wisdom that came out of both of us today, this is what happens when you love yourself first. This is the magic that happens. Who knew you had all this inside of you? Uh, <laughs> no, I did. I you love know, when. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll tell I you my idea. I, I, I do something and I feel like the universe is going, oh, yeah, you could play there, but move over, amateur. Let me show you how it's done. And <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? You actually have inspired me from this interview. I used to do interviews with people all the time because I love being on the other side of it to interact like you are. And I, I kept thinking, you know, I probably should bring that back. Some interview people along the lines of you who are so in tune, in touch, and, and much bigger than the normal step one for success is. <laughs> uh, sound like Charlie Brown's teacher for crying out loud. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. <laughs> really, really interview people that are profoundly tuned in, tapped in, turned on, as Abraham says, but even, even more than that, because there are people that speak a really good game. Yes. The difference is who are the ones actually living it? Yes. We're all living it to one degree or to another. We're all doing the best we can. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm nowhere near where I can be. I'm stepping into living that every single day. Yeah. But that's the, that's the point. I don't know what it's going to be. Again, I told you, Franny and I, I, I don't want to say anything yet because it'll be ad, but Franny and I are working on something really cool. But this is a little different just based on this. So I thank you. And look, guys, this is what gets birthed when you're not letting fear dictate your every thought, when you're not letting doubts or insecurities or the past dictate then, and you allow love to come in, and you allow the divine messages to come in. And I'm not just talking to your head. I'm talking to your heart. Look, guys, if you're in here, it's perfect. But a lot of times, you know, if you do a checkup from the neck up, you know, your head's fine. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even talking about your head. I'm not talking about your brain. I'm really talking about using your intuition, which is thinking with your heart, allowing the universe to speak to you and allowing this to come out through you. Yes. When you do that, amazing ideas are going to come. And when they come, when you hear that voice, I'll give you a, for instance, I know we're going to wrap up, but I'll give you a, for instance. We're good. 20 years ago, I was teaching because I love kids because they're our future. And I heard this voice while I was writing something on the board. And it said, you don't need the safety of the classroom anymore. Love that. And right then and there, I knew I was done. I couldn't do it anymore. It was over. And five years ago or so, my life changed. A whole bunch of stuff ended. And I said, what, what is it I really, really, really want to do now? What would bring me so much joy? And instead of trying to figure it out and writing everything down, what am I good at? Well, how do I do this? And talking to a hundred different friends and going into a cave and meditating for 20 years. And no, I just said, what do I want to do? And I got quiet for a couple of minutes. And the voice was focus on your poetry. Uh, see? So since that day, a little over five years ago, I started writing a ton that day. I went from 600 or so poems to over 2,000 now. 
So there you go. I, everything about me and my teachings comes out in so many ways as poetry. It said, do that. And I, there's no other way off that ride. That's it. I get off that ride. I might as well die because life will not be worth living. When you don't follow your heart and follow your passion, your joy really goes out of fashion <laughs> very, very quickly. And you start to live a life of misery. It's just not worth it. Listen, when that voice comes, take action immediately and set yourself free. Woohoo! And that's beyond the leading edge. Love it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, you No, this is for you, Kristen. Okay. Wait, hold on. I'm letting it come. I have goosebumps. Oh, hold on. I'm now, this is, see, this is live. None of this is edited. You're seeing me. You're seeing my eyes change. You're seeing the intuitive messages come. Now I have a challenge. Because maybe it was for me and not for you. So I'll just say it. I don't know yet. Maybe that's the name of my podcast. Ah. Beyond, beyond the Leading Edge. Yes. That's what Lindsay and I have been. And here comes Lindsay. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. What, what we've been doing is Beyond the Leading Edge. And I would love you to use that. Oh, perfect. Beyond the Leading Edge. Look how cool. I'm going to have to write a poem about that. Beyond the Leading Edge. I love yes. it. Well, yes. There's the name. And see, again, guys, do you, do you understand, everybody that's watching, what just happened? The idea of me interviewing people just like said, you, you need to do that. And then the name just showed up. That's how beautiful it is and how quick it is within minutes. It all just appeared. Guys, that's what I'm saying. This doesn't have to be hard. Abraham says, drop the oars, turn the boat around and go downstream. Stop trying to go upstream. Stop. In fact, most people are trying to go upstream with two broken arms and two broken oars. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so difficult. Stop making it so hard. It doesn't have to be. Life is meant to be a joy, to be easy, to be fun, to be exciting. Do that and watch what happens immediately. There it is. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> this is so much fun. We have so much fun together. I love this. <laughs> well, when I start the podcast, you will be one of the first guests, if not the first. Absolutely. In fact, in fact you should be the first because the name and the whole be. thing was, was you are the first. It is done. Okay. And, and there you go. <laughs> Beyond the and Leading Edge podcast is born. Yes, and that is my expect excellence. I refuse to live less than beyond the leading edge. It's just way too exciting out here. It <laughs> is. Fun. It is. I can't wait. You're going to do this. Yes. Let's rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God, Darshan. This was the best, the absolute best. I love how, the again, here's the universe going, move over, amateur. Let me show you how it's done. Every podcast is better than the last one. And I'm thinking, there's no way it could get better. And they're like, let me show you. Step Challenge aside. <laughs> when you do 30 or 40 more and I'm 40 back from where I am now, <laughs> they're like, damn, I, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you what, when you do number one with me, we've got a 10 times what I just did here. You yes. gotta step up. Step, I mean, it's gonna be so huge. It it's is, gonna be bigger than you could what, ever imagine. It's gonna be so big. Oh, That's wrong. Uh, <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> All right, Dashaun, thank you so much. Have the best day ever because you already have, and it's just gonna get better from here on out. I have no choice. Yeah. When people say they're gonna have. Have a wonderful day. I said, I'm going to have a hundred and wonderful day because that's a hundred times better than just a wonderful day. Oh, I like that. Boom, there you go again. All these little nuggets you dropped in here today. There you go. Well, you have a thousand, a million, a billion and wonderful day. 
in thank the you community. for interviewing me. This has been a ton of fun. You made my day. Thank you for making the difference you're making with these podcasts. It's fabulous. I don't even love the name Unmasked because what, what are we doing? We're taking off our masks. It's not just about you. It's about showing the world who we really are because that is how we go far and be that star that we are. That's the whole point. We are unmasked. You are fabulous. God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Darshan. Mwah!